This is a short overview of the software we are currently using to control both our 4Pi microscopes, our spinning disk, and our single objective SMS system. If you're watching this, you may have some interest in using this in your lab, or you're just here to get a general sense of the overall philosophy. This project started from a need for software to run a custom 4Pi microscope, which has been reproduced in four different labs. In each instance, everyone has roughly the same physical system, so it made sense to make one software package that could be used across all the labs. The general aim was to develop a LabVIEW-based modular platform for microscope control. As I just mentioned, this was originally intended for use with a 4Pi system, but can be used to control other camera-based systems as well. You don't need to be very familiar with LabVIEW to use this, and I'm not going to get into anything very LabVIEW specific here. With all of this in mind, the general requirements we wanted to target were something that had no central VI or main program, something that could be adapted to different systems and setups, and included the possibility to develop modules or different parts of the program in parallel. So the first component is a standalone program for image display. This is a VI whose only job is to display images. Other programs running in LabVIEW tell this program what images to display, and it can display up to six different images. There are minimal visible user controls, but you can right-click on any image to bring up a menu with options like color lookup table or turning the auto scaling on and off. Just to get a quick sense of how this works in practice, let's open the image display module and have a look. This is the display module. I'm showing three bead images as an example. If you right click on an image, you bring up a menu that has different options. For example, you can turn the auto scale on or off, you can hide or show the Z scale, and you can change the color lookup table. This window can be resized, and when you change the size, the displays shown automatically adjust so that they stay in view. You can also add displays or remove displays. The second component is something I'm calling the drop-down VI loader. This is a program whose only job is to display other programs in an organized way. This uses something in LabVIEW called subpanels, which are containers that simply display other programs. The idea here is that your screen has limited real estate, but most people have a mouse with a scroll wheel. So like a website, when content is arranged vertically, it's easy to scroll up and down when you move between things. You can also expand and collapse each subpanel to hide things that are used infrequently. To get a sense of how this looks, let's switch over to the drop-down VI loader. This is the drop-down VI loader. Things are arranged vertically, and the individual subpanels can be expanded or collapsed depending on which items you would like to have visible. This window can also be resized. So far, we have an image display module that other programs can use to display images. We have a program that can display other programs, and at this point, nothing is device or system specific. It's all very generic. Now we're going to try and tie this all together and give a short overview of how the software works. This will be the slightly more technical part, but it's only one slide, so it shouldn't be too painful. The lowest level of the software is something we're calling device engines. These are the LabVIEW VIs that directly communicate with the devices connected to your computer. And here's where it's helpful to have a little background with LabVIEW. The idea is that these device engines do not appear on any VI block diagram, they are not part of any main program, and the user does not interact with them directly. One level up from this is something we're calling messenger VIs. These communicate with device engines using a mechanism in LabVIEW called notifiers. The messenger VIs are set up to communicate with any device of a particular class. For example, if we have a stage messenger, it can communicate with any of the stage device engines 
for example, an XY or a Z stage, these do appear on the block diagrams of the microscope modules, which are the next level up. The microscope modules are the user-facing VIs that use messenger VIs to control one or more devices. These do have messenger VIs on their block diagrams for device communication. The overall idea here is that if the XY stage device engine crashes, it shouldn't stop the user interface from working. If that happens, you can quit the device engine, fix the problem, and relaunch the device engine without having to turn off other parts of the software. This modular arrangement also means that you can make changes to the lower level device engines while someone else is making updates to other parts of the program without any conflicts. So to connect all of this, we have the example X, Y, and Z stage control I'm showing in the upper right of the slide, and all we have to do is load that into the drop-down VI loader. Then it's simply a matter of adding the other modules you want to the drop-down VI loader to suit the needs of the system you're trying to control. That's the end of the short overview, and hopefully this gives you a sense of what the overall idea is. This work has been entirely supported by the Wellcome Trust and has been carried out at the Gurdon Institute at the University of Cambridge, UK.